it's Delaney. And it's Katie, and this is Classically Black Podcast. Where we talk all things classical music and being black in the profession. With trap beats playing in the background. Hey, y'all, for the second time. Hey. (laughs) Um, I mean, it's not really the second time. I guess, never mind. Oh, yeah, technical difficulties are annoying. I don't understand why. Like, this is episode 45, okay? I don't... (laughs) I'm confused. That is crazy. Like, what the heck have we been talking about for 45 episodes? And, and why do people keep listening? <laughs> and I feel like <laughs> I feel like I can only name the topics for like about 15. Remember when we went through all of them and we're like, can we and name? couldn't name? I mean, that that's a little harder to name them in chronological order than it is to just list that off topics. True. But but also, you know what was freaking embarrassing about that? The fact that when we got to the episodes that were like two, three weeks before the one that we were about to record, we couldn't name them. Like, <laughs> I remember, I remember all the interviews we did, <laughs> Caitlin, and um, and Jasmine. That was funny because why does Jasmine talk to us? Um, but that's probably it. And like, <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all. Well, moment of truth. I tried the chicken oh, sandwich. Oh, yeah, tried the freaking chicken sandwich. Yes, I did. So when I initially tried, I, of course, I got the spicy one because I'm about to say I was going to ask you which one you got because I heard there were two different experiences from the omnivores. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, because Kev on stage, I could, you know, the Christian like uh, comedian Kev mm-hmm. on stage. He did a video with he has. I didn't know. First of all, I didn't know his YouTube channel was that lit. Like he's freaking lit. And he did a YouTube channel, and the dude tried the. They had the Chick Fil A sandwich and the and the Popeye Popeye sandwich, and they were back to back and kev had the the normal one so the dude that he was doing the video with was like oh man this is beating chick-fil-a he's like no nah, man it's not doing it for me like and the dude was like but the sauce and he was like what sauce mine ain't got no sauce and like you gotta try the spicy one you gotta try the spicy yeah. one. and then so so he went and got the spicy one because you know they bought like 73 of the chicken sandwich you all the reason why there's no more left right and he was like oh dang man like this did it like Popeyes might have hit something like I guess the spicy one is a whole. I mean, I would never know. Um, you never say never. The thought of me eating chicken, I'm not trying to be dramatic. Like it's so far removed from me, it would literally. I can't even like form my mouth to do it. Like it's not like freaking accidentally drinking cow's milk. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like I, I'm so far removed from what that sensation is. It's, I'm about to be three years, so it's like I'm super good. But I saw this girl make a vegan one. I might could try when I'm done <laughs> getting my life back on track. It's not gonna be anyway. the same, but um, <laughs> it literally won't. <laughs> you said what? I said it literally won't. <laughs> Wait, what did truth. you say before that? No, I said it's not gonna be the same. Listen, some of the vegan girls really be doing it, and I got I got my ways because I got some chicken mm. seasoning. So when I put it in my seitan and boil it, like, listen, shout out to Joseph Conyers who knows exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna make seitan, and I'm gonna put. I have vegan chicken broth. I'm gonna fr- I'm gonna season it really well. I'm gonna fry it up. I'm gonna make a vegan sriracha mayo, pickles, and lettuce. It's gonna taste probably better, actually. I doubt that. Shout out to the vegans out there. I, I doubt it's gonna taste better. Crazy. I'm not gonna say it won't taste good. It'll probably taste good. I, I mean, mean, I vaguely remember Popeye's chicken, and it's it freaking slaps. So <laughs> I might even love go. Popeye's. So I tried the sandwich. I tried the spicy one, um, and. First of all, something told me, I mean, one thing about me, some people may know this, I love bread. Um, So something oh told me God. to try the bread on its own. Oh, yeah, because you said it was like sweet bread, right? It wasn't sweet to me, and that wouldn't appeal to me. I don't really like stuff like that, like those Hawaiian rolls. You don't like rolls. Hawaiian bread? I, I don't care for it. I don't think it's nasty. Really? I, yeah. I, I miss them. They have milk in them. Make a vegan version. I'm, I'm like good. That, those are Damn. Things, freaking good. I don't. Why, I, okay, I'm. I'm sorry to pull over at every intersection, but like, <laughs> what is there not to like about Hawaiian bread? There's literally nothing. It's sweet bread, but it can be savory too. Put a little butter on. You know what I used to do? Oh my god, this is why I had to lose weight. So <laughs> I would like you make a Sunday meal. You like sp- spread butter on it. You put it in the oven so it gets a little on top. And okay. Well, you know I love bread and butter, so. 
but mm, yeah it's not for me but that bread by itself yes. like that's where they went right so i mean like wow. and, it, and it's kind of like you can't really even taste the individual flavor of it with the whole sandwich but just the te- like the bread, <laughs> they went off and so when i tried it i was like okay this is obviously good i knew it was gonna be good i mean and i was like it's, freaking, it's chicken and bread right it, it's um, impossible for it to be nasty unless you had them tyson ones that you microwave unless it was from kfc or, yeah right. but um so when i tried it i was like so i like chick-fil-a chicken sandwich too and it was sort of the situation where like a lot of people have polarizing opinions on coke versus pepsi i like both coke and pepsi and i acknowledge that they taste different they do okay but i, I don't say, like taste drastically different yeah me. but i don't like one of them more than the other to be honest like i don't oh for real coke tastes yeah. way better than pepsi i mean I don't drink people soda, say that people say that but like it tastes i way better they they don't taste the same but they don't i don't think one tastes i i drink pepsi more often i do because I, that's yeah, what our school that. our school serves yeah. pepsi like so that's the only reason why if they serve coke i drink coke like <laughs> but it makes no difference to me so that's kind of my opinion at the very beginning but then i realized i haven't been to chick-fil-a in like a year so oh, yeah, i because i don't i don't like going over there all the way over to greece just to get yeah. some fries i don't really there's I not be really chick-fil-a is around me i don't really eat chick-fil-a them like almost ever most i ate chick-fil-a was last summer because there was one right next to uh the music festival i was at and if i didn't want to eat in the cafeteria i'd eat at chick-fil-a but um oh that's kind of on brand for our uh topic today (laughs) chick-fil-a has been canceled um for a long time okay for a long time but the girls never mind yeah because i mean i didn't charge chick-fil-a until like last year because of that but anyway um yeah so i got i went to chick-fil-a a couple of days after i got the sandwich to refresh my memory the popeye mm-hmm. sandwich like excuse my language the popeye sandwich shits on chick-fil-a i imagine because like, it Chick-fil-A. squats over it and shits on it <laughs> like, <laughs> not squatting. Like, it is so much better i would like, imagine from okay i had a chick-fil-a sandwich once or twice because chick-fil-a when i was eating meat wasn't by me so like i wasn't going like i've been i've been vegan since i've been at eastman and they they built a chick-fil-a last year so that doesn't work and then before that i lived in champaign illinois there was no chick-fil-a down there there might be one now so i wasn't eating chick-fil-a often and then when i did go to chick-fil-a the nuggets used to slap so that's what i was oh yeah it took me a long time to graduate from the nuggets right so but from what I remember about Popeye chicken, like the little crunch around it and stuff like that, it's like there's no. And Chick Fil A chicken is good because it's, it's just good quality chicken. Like I'm sure, I'm sure like Popeyes gets their chicken from like first of all, look at how big that freaking chicken sandwich is. Like them big titty chickens that they got, like they oh, okay. <laughs> they making them in Dexter's laboratory. Okay, so I think <laughs> laboratory. Like, you suck. Yeah, my friend <laughs> I, did find a fried chicken foot in her Popeyes chicken one time. Right, like. I think what make people like chicken Chick Fil A is because like they use real chicken, like they use good like Tyson chicken or whatever the heck. So, um, but there's no way there was to me watching these reviews and stuff. There was no way that the Chick Fil A sandwich was better. It's, there's it's no way. So much worse. Like okay, not it's not okay, bad. Not, okay. <laughs> it's not bad. But what I will say, I will never buy another sandwich from Chick Fil A again. Really? Knowing I mean, knowing that I can get. Knowing that I can get one from Popeyes, no. I mean, but how long? Because Popeyes, I heard, I heard they sold out till October. I'd rather not have a chick sound a chicken sandwich between now and then. I don't really eat chicken sandwiches otherwise, anyway. Mm. Like Chick Fil A was the first one I'd ever had because chicken sandwich doesn't really apl- like doesn't appeal to me. But I would never buy another chicken chicken sandwich from Chick Fil A again. Why would I waste my money on that? Have you had the? the chicken what's it called the asiago chicken sandwich from wendy's no i have not it, okay it freaking slaps like you have to from what i remember okay like you have to, that was my joint like you have to try it it's is it spicy it's, it's you can get it spicy oh, okay. so it's spicy chicken the ch- Wendy's chicken is is good and then they have like bacon and cheese like asiago cheese and like i think it's caesar dressing and it's just i know it sounds crazy but it's freaking good mm. but um you saw chick-fil-a came out with a mac and cheese i'm like y'all are childish these are corporations 
<laughs> I just... they... Nikki sent me a, a screenshot of her email about let me let me freaking pull it up. I'm like, y'all are children. It's a ch- it's okay. Like y'all are both getting money, like bags and bags and bags and bags of money. Like, um, okay, here you go. She was like dig into happy. Okay, here you go. I'm gonna show it to you actually, so you can see it. Mm. It says uh, dig into happiness. You're not dreaming. We added something delicious to our menu. Stop by for a taste of Chick Fil A's new mac and cheese. I'm like y'all are children. <laughs> like freaking children. First of all, Popeye. Cajun flies. Right. Like we got Cajun. You can order your your fries. Uh, Cajun. <laughs> like my pastor was joking around on Instagram. He was like. <laughs> Y'all are so churchy. He was like, um, Popeyes is a good example about when you pray for something, make sure you're oh ready for gosh. it. <laughs> oh, you see what happened. Don't make Popeyes be you. Like, if you pray for a season and a breakthrough, make sure you're ready for the blessing. I was like, y'all are so freaking That churchy. is hilarious. It's freaking, I died. Because <laughs> it's freaking true. How do y'all run out of chicken sandwiches? I, yeah, they was not expecting beyond. that. And some, some the, the, like, I saw a picture of some dudes that bought a bunch of chicken sandwiches and then tried to resell them. I was like, ain't nobody buying no resold chicken sandwich from y'all. And now y'all looking dumb because you got 50 sandwiches and ain't know what to do with them. Who was the future buy? that had a, a trunk full of chicken sandwiches? Well, first of all, he gassed that way too much because he made it seem like he was like, yeah, man, I got the plug, man. I got the, it was on the show room. I, I would try to send it to you, but they post every 15 minutes, so there's no way I'm finding it. But he was like, I got the plug, man. I got the, he opened his trunk. He had like 50 chicken sandwiches. I'm like, Ugh. This is why it sold out, okay? And I know Beyonce tried it first, because you know Beyonce got free Popeyes for life? Does she really? Yeah. Beyonce's vegan. Well, she's, I don't think she's, like, permanently vegan. Oh, she was vegan for, like, a second? I think, I think she does it, like, as a training thing. Like, she oh, does, like, there's a certain, mad. it's a certain, like, um, diet that she goes on. Oh, and I don't think she, on. Yeah. Oh. I think she does it like um in certain like times it's like a i think because i remember it's a certain amount of time that she goes vegan um and has like this whole thing i don't know there's a video on it she couldn't be vegan around me because i'll be i've been wilding so that's now i'm back in the gym so because vegan to me is beyond burgers and fries so okay but. well one thing i will <laughs> say Last thing I will say about the Popeye chicken sandwiches, I can't see myself getting a meal of that. Like, because it's fried chicken with bread, oh, and then yeah. you get some fries on top of that. Bread. And Lord help you if it come with a biscuit. Like, <laughs> I doubt it do. Because oh, all that bread. I mean, there's no way out. Yeah. Like, I couldn't eat. Like, I ate the chicken sandwich, and I was like, I wish if the chicken sandwich had been a little bit bigger, because it's not that big. If the chicken sandwich had it been a little bit massive. bigger. It's not. No, it's not. At least not the one I had. Um, if it was they a little bigger, I'd be full. Because I was like, I don't know if I could eat fries with this. Like, I could eat. So. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Cause just oh, so much, shoot. so much bread. Like fried chicken is has breading on it. Then it's in between two pieces of bread, and then you get some fries. Like you know, it's just a bunch. And I love fried food, but I don't love it that much. You know. I feel like if you're gonna eat that, that has to be like a treat meal. That can't be like yeah. A- I'm, which is uh, it's my lunch hour i'm gonna go over to the popeyes and give me yeah <laughs> which is already what popeyes is for me like mm-hmm. i eat popeyes maybe once a month if that actually mm-hmm. not even like especially if i'm yeah at this point i probably eat popeyes once every two three months but Oof. that's our inaugural chicken sandwich uh intro Okay. Not inaugural. This literally, it's literally not inaugural because we talked about it last week. So, did we really? Oh yeah, yeah, we did. I mean, I've been enjoying myself. I've been enjoying you guys enjoying chicken sandwiches. Right. Okay. Well, well, Katie will keep us updated on her Satan sandwich. Okay, you suck. Secondly, I'm gonna make one. You know, I'm gonna make. I've been a, thinking of making one my, at myself at home and see how it turns out. Does Popeye make does Popeyes make a seasoning? Like you know how some restaurants like they have like their their seasoning in the store. Do they sell it? I don't. Yeah. Think do so. they have? Oh, okay. Because you know, Chili sells their stuff. You know, like people sell their seasoning. Yeah, Panda Express sells their orange chicken sauce. Panda Express, which sucks. You might as well. <laughs> you're better off making your own. Like, look it up, girl. It's not that hard to make orange chicken. I mean, it's it's time consuming, 
because you gotta like squeeze oranges and like cornstarch and junk like that but just make your own like <laughs> the pan express sauce freaking sucks it just does but that's like oh that, that was a long time ago all right so breezing through news this week thank god nobody touched anybody this week so oh, wow it's our first time in like the past three four weeks that we haven't talked about that so that's good see how long this lasts <laughs> the bar is really underneath the earth's crust for y'all like <laughs> for real father god <laughs> like and you know maybe somebody did and i just missed it right and somebody not recording it because like you threatened to like demote them from orchestra yeah. or some junk like oh y'all are pathetic right so breezing through news this week just two quick things one is an event with the national symphony orchestra um they're doing a concert featuring a violinist chelsea green and the green project okay. right and wait i think i saw it on facebook okay chelsea right and and a black conductor joseph young um, who's, who will be making his debut with the orchestra. If you would like to see them, um, Saturday, September 14th, the concert is completely free. Um, it's at 2 p.m. The doors open at 1.30. Okay. Oh, you good? Sorry. <laughs> the concert is at um, at 3 p.m. and uh, the doors open at 1.30. So I will post the info on that concert if you guys want to see it in Washington, D.C. Um, on September 14th. Um, and then secondly, I saw something and then you ended up sending it to me later, um, about Solange having a residency at the Sydney Opera House. Wait, I said that's you? Yeah. Who a residency at the Sydney Opera House? I ain't Solange. Here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I looked it up and like, it's not necessarily classical music related, I mean, I, I assumed it wouldn't be. Mm-hmm. But I one really thing did. I did find, though, that I thought was really cool that um, happened a couple months ago, but it's still related, was that Solange composed the score for a um, menswear spring and summer 2020 show at Paris Fashion Week. Oh, shoot. Right. I was like, come on, composer. Right. So Ex- I'm dumb talented. Right. I was like, compose the score. How the Oh. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I was lost with cranes in the sky. I'm not gonna hold you. The girls are going up for it, and I was like, mm, "I'm probably gonna get dragged for that." But I have an unpopular opinion about Solange, to be honest. Um, <laughs> do tell. I, no, it's not that I don't. I just have not listened to anything. Like everyone went up for Solange, and I just haven't. You know, I don't really listen to recent music, but I refuse mm-hmm. to listen to Solange just because Solange went through a thing when she tried to sing like a a long time ago Mm -hmm. um and it was really really terrible like to be quite honest she had a this song called i decided well she sounded constipated and i've just been scarred from from her like previous uh her previous music so when she came out with stuff i was like solange you doing that again sis but apparently everybody loves it and thinks it's great and I believe you. I just won't be indulging. Uh, uh, I won't be participating. So I don't mind weird, but like, I mean, cause like, let's be let's be honest. Like, taking the bangers is kind of like kind of weird, you know. But like, I don't know. I just I'm not. Uh, I wish her the best. I'm I'm just not a. I, I and I like her vibe. I do like her vibe and I like her aesthetic, you know. But like, I just don't really care for her music. Mm-hmm. And that's that on that. <laughs> yeah, I haven't really listened to it. Because I was just like when I, when I saw she was coming out with an album, I was like that don't mean nothing to me. But um, I did say only excuse me, I did say only two things this week. But actually, I have a third thing I forgot about. Um, so I was watching the news. Well, the news was on, and I was oh, like, with your grandma, I was just about, <laughs> <laughs> I, that's why I was like, well, the news was on, and I was in the room. <laughs> oh, I'm about to say like my grandma watches the news, and I'd be like. C80 my grandma watches what? the news constantly my grandma watches the news all like my grandma has a regimen okay like literally i'm like gloria <laughs> like, i remember telling my grandma like i was like oh i have to leave around six and then it was funny because <laughs> we, no we have to do something at six and right at six she said it and i was like dang grandma you prompt and she was like oh i just know because rachel maddow was on it like it came on so she knew what time it was because she watches it every wow. single day like yeah 
<laughs> my grandma watches the nine o'clock news, the ten o'clock news, the twelve o'clock news. Oh, and okay, at ten o'clock she watches the news, and then she watches Surprise is Right, and then Let's Make a Deal, and then she watches the twelve o'clock news, and then she watches Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune, and then the seven o'clock news. Like it's just <laughs> oh, and the four o'clock I forgot four o'clock news. Like and she's like, did you hear it? Did you hear it said this man do this? And I'm like, yeah, it was on Instagram. Like <laughs> like it's just. <laughs> The news is boring and it's too many commercials, but that's not the point. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, my grandma's the same except for with talk shows. Like she watches the the one that Whoopi Goldberg that, is on, and then unfortunately she watches the Wendy Williams show. Which Whoopi Goldberg? Yeah. Which one's that? The talk? The the stance? Yes, the... one of those. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh. The View. Is it the, the View? Yeah, one of them. Or is yeah. that is that Adrian Baylon? I have no Girl, idea. Girl, I don't know. Um, but. Regardless, I saw on the news uh, an ensemble called the Black Triage Ensemble, um, and their mission is to use black uh, music and art to address pain, foster healing, promote love, call for justice, and guard against hopelessness. So um, basically, they use their their group of um, black and I believe Latinx uh, string players that uh, go and they go to usually like uh it could be like visuals or like you know things that places that tragedy has has struck and they play oh, music there I saw that. yeah um that's so cool it said that they're committed to using music as a healing force for the soul um in the immediate aftermath of community violence so like if someone was shot and killed in the community or something like that they'll go to where it happened um and play um and they their primary focus is fatal shootings um but um also suicides opioid deaths car accidents wow. infant deaths and how in house fires um and they also uh like they try to have their music address the five stages of grief so denial anger bargaining depression and acceptance um, but mm-hmm. they also believe in a sixth stage of grief, which is faith. Oh, right. Nice. Um, yeah. So they um, it was founded by uh, David M. A. Hallman, um, who was the musical grandchild of Yasha Heifetz. Oh, shoot. Right. I was like, <laughs> OK, then. Right. Um, he plays gospel music and um, classical music, and he's the assistant concertmaster of the Church of God in Christ International Orchestra. Um, I didn't know y'all had. Right, I was just about to say. I was like, I ain't know about all that. I know Kojic was lit, but I didn't know y'all had all right. that. Look that up. <laughs> I was like, Kojic be having Kojic be having orchestra. Everything. Right, that's something I need to audition for. I mean, that's my freaking. That's where I need to be. Right, I should have, but you know, I should have known because when I played at West Angeles, first of all, West Angeles, uh with their multiple campuses <laughs> like, right should have known they had some type of some type of something but dang international orchestra yeah I'm a, that I'm a sounds lit. Right now. like that sounds how audition lit. what you gotta do probably gotta improvise <laughs> <laughs> oh true <Oops. laughs> um but he um the founder mr Hellman, he plays violin viola clarinet piano alto sax tenor sax flute and pipe organ which Come on. Right. Um, but yeah, it's an amazing ensemble. Um, they they focus on like I said, black string players, but they yes, yeah, everybody black in here. Mm-hmm. It's also not traditional. There's like saxophones and stuff in here too. With the saxophone Wait, you talking about the Kojic orchestra? Mm-hmm. Wait, what oh. you talking about? I'm sorry, you moved on, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> the ensemble. Oh, I'm freaking enamored. Okay, go ahead. So they do what now? No, I was just saying that, that it's mainly um uh black black string players, but um they Aww. do they do have a couple of um Latinx Americans. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So in case That's you wanna cool. um check them out, they are based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's how I saw it, cause I saw it on the Milwaukee News. Oh, that's why you saw it on the news, didn't you? You said you saw it on the news. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In Milwaukee, yeah. like Milwaukee's like low key like a Rochester, like there'd be a lot of stuff going on up there. Like I like Milwaukee. Like if I want a cute little getaway, like I dragged my grandma there um last summer and she refused to admit that she had a good time. Um 
and it's just nice like the the waterfront's right there but there's a lot of the same thing with rochester rochester has some gems except for the matt river um <sighs> no oh my god so during gateways i went to um this restaurant she said <laughs> she said it was gonna be on the river and i tried i had to fix my face because i was like y'all be eating over there because okay girl and it was freaking nice like it was really nice I mean, and the water actually moves. If you didn't, if you didn't know, on Genesee, yeah, I was, I was shocked. You might call, the water you might was moving. It, it Jello was, Sea. Yeah, okay, you move like Jello. <laughs> like the water was brown, but it was moving. Listen, Rochester. At this point, just dye the water blue. I mean, I will be so much better. <laughs> like the water be green in the winter, and I know people be like, Chicago has a green river. I'm like, yeah, because they dye it green for St. Patrick's Day. Like not because of whatever's growing down there is vomiting green bile. But they green. dye the river. Chicago, yeah, they they dye the Chicago River green for St. Patrick's Day every year. That is so extra and can't be good. <laughs> I don't know what they use. I'm gonna look it up. I don't know what they use, but like they do it every year. So, yeah. All right, intermission. All right, so this week we talking about self care. Um, you said what? I said, uh-oh. So I just thought it'd be cute. Like a lot of you girls are going back to school, can't relate. Um, and <laughs> I just think, I mean, it doesn't matter. Like we we all got music to learn, so I just think it's important um, to do things that you know take care of yourself, like your self care routines. I want to talk about like what my self-care routine is, what Delaney's self-care routine is, and, like, what we think about self-care. Because, you know, it's important to take care of yourself, like, not just, like, your hygiene. Like, I hope you guys are showering, especially, like, you know, rehearsals are about to start back up. Don't be... Okay. All right. The sun is still out, so deodorant is a must. Like, girl, don't nobody want to be in the middle of the exhibition. It's a must, or you will be. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Don't nobody want to be in the middle of the exposition and always smell as you. Okay, so I'm not talking about showering. Okay, that's what we're not talking about. But like taking care of your mind, taking care of your health, your mental health, and also making sure that you understand that your self worth is not connected to your craft. Um. So with that being said, what is your self care routine? And if you don't have one, if you don't have a routine. What are some of the things you like to do self-care? So when I think about self-care, I'm thinking about, like, everyone's self-care routine is different. I mean, some people be like, I just watch Netflix for 73 hours. And I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) I I feel attacked. Who are me to tell you what your self-care is? It's not me, but normally self-care is, like, taking care of your mind and taking care of your, like, but you know what? Everybody has their stuff. What's your self-care routine? It, it's non-existent um that's okay self-care is something that i'm terrible at like i'm i feel like especially last semester like i'm a firm believer in like this just needs to get done like mm-hmm. and and it got to the point where i'm like people need to stop asking me like how are you doing because i'm like it doesn't matter i need to do this like mm-hmm. it, like that was literally my mindset which is so so problematic um and backfired mm-hmm. tremendously so <laughs> That's um okay. but like we, live and we learn yeah like that that was very much my my mindset before like it don't really matter how i'm doing because this this deadline is still this deadline and this concert is still mm-hmm. happening and this recital is still doing it i still have this lesson and you know mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. like my mom was like delaney your health is everything like yeah no- nothing else exists without it like, yeah, like literally like health is wealth like it's like and that, I always heard that phrase like when I was growing up and I was still eating cosmic brownies and fried chicken like and didn't care and it's like but like okay. the older I got and like when on my little health journey or whatever like you have nothing without your health like not even just like your physical health like it's like your mental health like you just it's just like you don't have anything without it so i know you don't have a self-care routine well i didn't i didn't know that because i don't freaking spend every moment of every day with you but what are some things (laughs) okay um no more episodes for classically black we just 
stream 24 hours a day on YouTube. You can just jump <laughs> in anytime. <laughs> oh, that even freaking look like. Okay. Um, what are some things you like to do for self care? So you might not have a routine, but what are some things that you like to do? Like you're stepping away from the instrument, you're stepping away from work, you're stepping away from. Okay, let's 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 break let's break it down to the bare bones, right? You're stepping away from electronics, phones, computers. You're stepping away from all that television. What is at that basic state? Like, what is something that you like to do for self care? Mm. That's not sleeping. That's like mindful. Cause I'm, I I know you're trifling, so I know that that could be some girl what's going. Okay. This covering on my bases. Wow. Oh, that was a pun. Yeah, wow. I'll if I was covering my bases, my inter- never mind. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to take my pun and turn it into strife, okay? That was mine. Okay, come up with your own. I don't know. I feel like the biggest thing for me is putting the, like, with putting electronics down. Like, things like social media is largely not even fun for me. I just do it out of habit. Mm which sucks like because that's very interesting like like instagram and stuff like there are some things that i check in with some people whose post notifications i do have on like i want to see what they're doing but Mm -hmm. like largely scrolling through instagram like we i'll be seeing the same stuff over and over again like it's not really fun and i'm like why don't i just put this down or like i'm watching the re-watching the office for probably the 11th time like why you know (laughs) <laughs> it's freaking lit okay that's why do I, I put on my freaking snapchat so dwight is so rude when stanley had the heart attack and phyllis was like you killed him he was like yeah i i, I pumped him full of butter, butter and sugar for 50 years and forced him not to exercise <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like and then that insult to injury he was like take a lesson from him and jog on up here and <laughs> dwight sucks he's so <laughs> rude he sucks like oh my goodness like that's why like i mean i do like um that's one thing with the whole netflix thing like i definitely watch too much netflix but to an extent like some of that is like things i know i like Mm -hmm. so sometimes you just want to watch things that you know you like you know yeah and that can i mean like i wasn't trying to like come for nobody like you or the listeners like some people like that's a part of your self-care like i just want to watch this thing because it makes me feel good you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. like it could be but l- largely it's largely it's just i can't close the damn laptop like <laughs> you um, said what i said largely it's just i can't close the damn laptop like and i ought to you know but mm-hmm. i've been trying to get back to like i used to love reading like as a kid i used yeah. to read like like mm-hmm. like four or five books at the same time like i used to love it then school ruined it for me but mm-hmm. um i've been reading more and i also try to walk my dog every single day because she See, likes that's it that's self-care you suck about you over here being like oh lord that's literally self-care i mean Exercise. i just started that this week <laughs> okay <laughs> but that's yeah fine. that's something i've tried to do every single day um i do like i like to go on walks like like I you know <laughs> it's so pointless to me i play a card note every month i i guess i get that but like if it's under a mile i'll walk do you so did i tell you what vina did to me what? Vina was like, "Let's go to brunch." This is like two weeks ago. She's like, "We can walk," and I was like, "Girl, for what? So my Hyundai can sit outside?" Like, wow. uh, <laughs> I mean, I still walk, and I was pissed because I didn't do a face because I didn't want to sweat. It was freaking. It was like ninety five degrees that day. The, of all days, I was like, mm. I walk when I have to walk. Like when I go abroad. Like, also, I also sometimes really walk to, um, like, I don't know. I, if it's under a mile, I walk um or That's let's say nice. if, if it's under cool. if it's under 0.7 miles if it's over like like if i take the train home and i don't drive from from work i will walk and that's over a mile so like mm-hmm. but i also do that because like on days when i work a full day i'm not gonna want to exercise so yeah. i can walk home you know and i will be mm-hmm. musty when i get back but you know that you was my exercise walk- for today walking like has zero to little return like okay you're out of breath and i'm like a sweaty i, I can be sweaty depending on what it is so it's like what you been doing anyway so to me it's just like I, okay i walk to eastman because i live a block from eastman what am i gonna do drive to freaking class <laughs> <laughs> girl 
like I will walk stuff like that, but I rarely, I rarely walk. Like other than that, like, but yeah, that's good. Okay, you walk your dog, and Netflix, and and you read. Yeah, I guess that's about it. And that's really like none of it is really like conscious. So like I feel like self care kind of stresses me out, which is counterintuitive, but I mean counterproductive. So how does it stress you out though? I mean, you don't have to. You don't want to share. I can cut it out. Because like to say a self care routine like with words like routine and schedule and stuff like that i'm very mm-hmm. uptight about it so i'm like i need to have a schedule okay. to yeah, my yeah. routine and then i have to keep to, like it's very much like if i have a self-care routine that means i'm sitting down and, and making like a physical schedule like oh, <laughs> and shoot. like oh, so that like that. that's just more that's just more work it's not even that's it like i like it to an extent but also it's a, just the way my like i feel like i have to do it Mm. in order to keep to it which is just more work yeah i mean even for me like coming up with this like like this intermission i was like okay well my so i don't have okay let's just start here i don't have a routine because i don't do it like people have self-care saturday like people do that like Mm -hmm. it's like their day where they period but it's like to say i have a routine where i'm doing it all the time like that would be a lie now i with that being said there are certain things that i do to make sure that like i'm taking care of my self-care like um one i one thing i've been very vocal about that i do is journal and i do i don't do it all the time because i don't want it to be like a, a task like i don't want it to be like dear diary x y and z this happened today because i feel like the reason why i've been so successful at journaling i started journaling about four or five years ago the reason why i've been so successful is because like i don't be like i have to do it on this day um but one thing I will do once a week is I will I'll do like a semi self-care thing where like I'll do a face mask um and I'll just sit there and like stare like maybe listen to a podcast I know like you should never really have like technology typically in 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 self-care but I'll sit I'll do a face mask and I'll listen to a podcast and then I'll like really really like go in a full skincare routine that's something i'll do um i like i try to make myself read um i agree with you like school school didn't ruin it because like some of the stuff i read was interesting in school you know i mean especially like looking back at i was talking to a friend about he was asking me if i was gonna get a dma and i was like child no i like school and i want to keep it that way i mean that might that might change because um you know, I don't know what the future holds, but as of right now, I'd rather just play. Like, you're literally signing up to read 5,000 pa- words, like 5,000 pages a week with the DMA and write a dissertation. That doesn't sound fun to me, but um, I try to read. Right now, I'm reading Becoming Michelle Obama. Oh, and, I got that. I'm going to start reading this song. Yeah. And I'm not going to, like, I, I there, used, there was a point that I would read, like, every night before bed because you really should not be on your phone before you go to bed but i just i don't have discipline for that i freaking my cousin was making fun of me because i fall asleep like scrolling through instagram which is pathetic um <laughs> and i'm reading low-key reading the handmaid's tale because i'm too scared to watch the series so i feel like if i just read it it'll be less t- scary i'm a wimp um <clears throat> excuse me and like one final thing i do for self-care is i work out a lot um <laughs> typically okay three to five done typically three to five times a week um it's not really self-care it's about me wanting to have a hot girl summer all the time and that didn't really go that well this summer because i had a hot girl summer reverse but um i just want to be out here i just want to be out here it falls coming i want a cute little crop sweater and um we work towards that um and i don't enjoy working out like i see people who enjoy working out like i don't get y'all like y'all are weird okay it's not fun to feel like you're gonna die okay and (laughs) (laughs) i remember one day because i normally work out on an empty stomach because i'm not gonna put my business out there but i normally work out on an empty stomach and one day like i wasn't feeling well we're all family here anyway one day i wasn't (laughs) feeling well and i literally had to stop because I feel like I was gonna faint, and I'm like, I don't have health insurance anymore, so <laughs> I oh, <laughs> can't afford that. Um, but aside from that, like, it's not fun because I try to push myself as hard as possible. Like, I'll go like uphill, no hands for an hour on the treadmill. You know, like, 
that's not fun okay that's it's not fun feeling like if i if i i'm about to see like god's face okay like i freaking fall off this treadmill and the next thing i'm looking at the pearly gates like that's not fun to me okay but i do know it's important especially like as a performer like when i was like anytime preparing for performance i'm i'm working out more than i normally would because i want to feel good on stage it's not fun to be out of breath by the exposition um which is like pathetic because that's literally the first thing that happens by the by the development it's not fun um so let us know what y'all do for self-care share the share the knowledge we want to know um sometimes i get real fancy i got some candles in my room i'll be lighting candles and reading Mm -hmm. i don't love to do that because i might fall asleep um and then you said what who you lighting candles with uh, Michelle Obama. That's who. Okay. Don't, don't be messy. One one thing I did I I forgot to say that I noticed I've been trying to do more is um making sure that I enjoy things. Meaning yeah. like when like so my favorite YouTuber I only there's only one YouTuber that I watch consistently. That's cool crazy to me because <laughs> i have like 73 i like that's just not my like i don't really even know any any youtubers but i have one youtuber that i watch and she posted a video a couple days ago i used to watch her videos as soon as they came out because she doesn't mm-hmm. post that consistently which is annoying to me because i'm like this yeah. is literally your job like and also you know what happened which i hate um what i know it's with youtubers that ones that pop off like how many subscribers does she have eight million Okay, and she was on BuzzFeed before, right? We're talking about the same person? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you know what happened? She started making guap, like probably 50, 60K a month. Yes, YouTubers make that much. Yes. She start, it's, it's crazy how much YouTubers make. So she started making guap, and it's like, now you don't have to post as much because because your life is getting crazy. You're doing other outside endorsements. Um, You have the freedom to travel more and whatever. Also, your old videos are still making money. So mm-hmm. these, these YouTubers that I, I used to really enjoy watching, I mean, they got really annoying. I'm really about to unsubscribe. I mean, it doesn't matter to them. Um, but they used to post videos every single day, used to hustle and do all this other stuff. And then they got started making guap. They have like 3 million subscribers now. They live in Dubai. Like they went on a whole trip to Georgia and didn't, the country, and didn't vlog it at all. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you realize that that's how y'all got here? Like, you realize that? <laughs> right. But, but anyway. like, I've tried to start like, it used to be that the things that I enjoyed, like checking so and so's videos and watching this show when it comes out, like it used to be something that like I just did because oh I've been waiting for this to come out so I'm gonna watch it right now. But like mm-hmm. her video came out and I had got, got home from work, I was tired, I was low key sleepy. I was like, no, I'm gonna wait until I feel good and I can enjoy this. Yeah. Like stop, like I've stopped taking, tried to stop taking things that like. I that are supposed to be fun for me and f- and just putting them where they fit in because this is supposed to be fun so let me do it yeah you know I feel you like I feel you. I, I'm like I've been trying to be like I'm gonna put I'm gonna do this at a time where I know I can fully enjoy it yeah and not just do it because it's here mm-hmm. you know so I still yeah. haven't watched it yet because I've been tired mm-hmm. and I, I'm gonna I sit down with my plate of food and, and watch it when I'm good and ready so i feel you on that i would encourage everybody to have some type of self-care routine i mean um like i said i don't have a routine because it varies like i might i might journal once a week i might journal once a month but like i do a skincare routine once a week you know that's part of my self-care or like i work out five times a week like i encourage everyone to have that kind of stuff because especially like musicians i feel like we get so wrapped up into what we're doing and I just personally, I just don't think it's a good place to be because I was talking to a friend who's not in classical music and I was just talking to her about, about how it works. And it's like, you think of like classical music is weird. You realize that you spend your whole life getting critiques about how you can do something better. That's weird to me. Like, I, yeah. I think, I think that's weird. It's like you literally go into a session once a week and and one-on-one with someone and they tell you for an hour about how everything you could everything you're doing could be better if you do this to me that's freaking weird i feel like there's not a lot of professions i mean ballet because i feel like i feel like um what's it called visual arts it's like 
you you paint this thing you sculpt this thing and then it's just is what it is because that's your medium that's your style that's your whatever and people either like it or they don't it's like classical music it's literally or jazz it's literally a way to do it like it's just what it is like it has to be this way it has to be played this way it's better if you play this 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 way it's like it's weird like that is freaking yeah. weird i saw this thing i think hockstein school posted it and it was like like it was one of those things where it's like the things that you can gain from classical music um and of course it was like increased like math skills and like you know all that stuff they always say it's not true one of them one of them was increased self-confidence i said i said self-confidence i said music like like do 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 music okay okay (laughs) but i'm not gonna lie to you i'm not gonna lie to you the most confident i was as a violist was like excuse me was middle school high school where i was like the best fields in school i was going to all state i was doing all that stuff that i mean unless you unless you like the best ever and even i don't understand how you think music will can build confidence like i literally I was like, I that doesn't make any, that literally doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense to me because <laughs> even you talk you talk to the best of the best there's literally <laughs> there's nothing you can there's no skill that to me that builds confidence and like for example, what I mean by that, I know that's like didn't make sense. But look at Simone Biles, right? I love gymnastics. I love watching it. I'm trying to get one of my friends. Listen, who wants to be my friend who's listening? I want to go learn because Delaney won't do it. Nikki won't do it. So I want to go learn how to do one of them little flips. I just want to do one little flip. That's all I really you want. You never asked like, you me know, to do that? Oh, would you go with me? Probably not. No, I'm just kidding. See, I would go. I, I learn- would go. I probably wouldn't do it just because I'd be scared of falling. The ro- well, actually, no, there's there this padding and stuff. Okay side note i was watching this video this called jubilee we did this before where um and they were like do all disabled people think of, think alike which i really okay. wish they titled it do all people with disabilities think alike maybe they did maybe they did because that's not that's like way better people aren't disabled they have a disability but um and then it was like the one of the girls that was in there was in a wheelchair she was a quadriplegic and she had a gymnastics ans- a- accident and i low-key be watching these gymnasts <gasps> oh, who no. like i'm sorry <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even mean to say that. I didn't, I didn't they, even mean to say that, but no, I'm not going with you. Sorry, sis. They, so, okay, so, 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 Delaney, sorry. it's it's going to be freaking tiny tight gymnastics. Like, no, they're going to, you know what they're going to do? One thing, one, it only takes one thing to turn me off to something completely. I'm sorry. I'm just so paranoid. They're going to have that big old rolly thing. First of all, I've done gymnastics before. You have to do it in our gym class. You have to, I think at freshman year, I had to do gymnastics. Like, they make you get on the beam and i was like oh that's real cute sis i'm not getting up there um we had to do floor we, we had to come up with a floor exercise routine like we had to vault and i'm like if you really think i'm about to run and then jump on that little thing and catapult myself like and i was like around in high school i'm like are you freaking kidding me? like <laughs> i was like we're gonna have to get a zero out of ten today there was stuff like <laughs> i was the worst i was that gym student i'm not doing it i'm like <laughs> I, her name was Miss Weber. I'm like Miss Weber. You must have lost your God given mind. I'm gonna <laughs> run my little chocolate round self running up <laughs> and jumping on that thing. And, and <laughs> oh my goodness! No. Nope, the nope, only nope. thing, the only thing I did in that class. Now that I think about it, and they were trying to make okay. I did a floor exercise because what are we what are we doing like somersaults like i did the floor exercise and i got zeros the rest of the, the rest of the days that we were up there for like three weeks i don't care i'm not doing that they try to make people get people to do kips if you don't know what a kip is it's like when you pull yourself up you can see me you pull yourself up onto a bar and like bring the bar like you, you put your pelvis on the bar that's a, called a kip oh. girls like on, on uneven bars girls are in gymnastics for three four years trying to get a kip okay I'm not doing that in three weeks with you who don't play, who don't do that. But, cause, okay, anyway. <laughs> so I was watching, I was watching Simone Biles because I just, I'm still confused, right? And the way she be flipping, I'm like, I be looking at her like, isn't that dangerous? Like, that little fall mat is not gonna save you. And and then I watched this thing and she was like, yeah, I had gymnastics. She was like top of her game. I'm gonna look her up. Um, She was like 14. So like, you know, 14 is like, you're trying oh to, gosh. from what I gather from the girls, like from what I get, because I follow a lot of them gymnastics girls, because it's literally fascinating to me that you are, you are, I, I thought cheerleading was crazy, but you are flipping through the air. Like, 
to me it's like if that's why i realize why boys don't do beam because mm, that's no way that way and will but it's like <laughs> <laughs> you are flipping through the air that can't be safe it's fascinating to me right no did you see that guy at the last olympics who's laying see? like snap <laughs> I won't First be doing all, it. I understand why Nikki told you no, and it's it, it's an absolute <laughs> hell no for me. So, so Listen, sorry. And you know, I watched. I was in the. I was. I saw it live. I'm trauma because I'm squeamish. I was traumatized. I literally I was, saw his. I saw him go one way, his leg go the other way. It was terrible. <laughs> my bones um, are like jelly right now, just thinking about it. I can't. But I told it makes my like, bones okay. itch. I want to learn how to do. I'm not. I'm not getting on nobody's beam or nobody's vault or nobody's bars, right? But I'm just saying, I want to learn how to do a backflip. I feel like I need a trainer to do that. Yeah, okay. okay. The reason why I said that. So, so Blaine and I are doing gymnastics. Expect the video on our YouTube channel. Yeah, um, I'll hold the camera. <laughs> okay, but Simone Biles, right? She's like the best athlete in the world. I think I don't know the athlete in the world, but definitely the best gymnast in the world. Period. It might be the best gymnast of all time, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think she is. Because she literally won six, oh girl. Anyway, six world champion. Okay, girl. So, um, they were interviewing her after, and they were like, they were like, so, what's next for you? Like, what are you still working on? She's like, well, yeah, it was okay. Mind you, sis dusted everybody by three points. And I know this doesn't sound like a lot, but in gym- gymnastics, where everything's like a tenth of a point off, tenth of a point, if you're dusting somebody by three points, that's a lot. And she was like, um, yeah, I'm just trying to make some stuff better. And I'm just, I, I'm still working, and there's some stuff that I just, I'm I'm not really ready for Tokyo. I'm almost there, and I'm like, girl, you have three moves named after you called the Biles, and it's like, but there's something there. It's like you can't have a skill, and it builds self confidence because she's literally the best gymnast in the world, and she's like, yeah, I still can work on this and this. And you know why? Because she has coaches in her face every freaking day telling her you know you really could do that better i'm like why don't you come and do it you know what i'm saying it's like it's weird to me i need all these specialties sports like classical music it's weird that you you literally get criticized every step you make like everything is like that was nice but you could do this that was good but can you think about playing it this way and like i love how you did that but if you do it this way that's weird to me i don't know so i think it's important have a so bring it all back have a self-care routine Step yourself separate yourself from the art because remember that your self-worth and your self-value is not attached to the music that you're making and if it is girl god bless um because i definitely have to learn that because it can get it can get real deep and can get real dark um if you if you don't remember that okay and are we moving on mm-hmm. yes <laughs> let's move on all right y'all so today <clears throat> we're talking about cancel culture um this idea came up from two things we want to shout out the first one is we talked about this briefly on triloquy when we were on there with garrett shout out to garrett um and triloquy he's not the only person in the show <laughs> <laughs> we've been over this <laughs> <laughs> the last time you were like garrett and hey scott <laughs> hey Sky, we love you or whatever um and we'll link that episode if you haven't because like since why haven't you heard this on trilogy but we'll link um that episode we we talked about it briefly and then we just like made a quick turn away from it um and then also i was watching uh a jackie Ina makeup tutorial jackie 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 somebody knows what i'm talking about uh she's also yeah, has like, somebody three, three she has like three million subscribers like people know what i'm talking about um i was watching jackie anna she was doing um an unpopular opinions video and one of the things she talked about is cancel culture so we thought it'd be cool to talk about it, especially like we've been talking about um people who are high key problematic in classical music and y'all don't care so um we thought we would dive into that so she made a lot of good points i thought um about cancel culture so we're going to dive into some of the stuff she said and then loop it back around to classical music so then you want to tell people like what is cancel culture because some of the girls just don't be knowing like who was canceled and like what does that even mean so what what is cancel culture so cancel culture kind of came from um a series of um things it's kind of like a trend of like people doing things um and then 
like a large amount of public being like oh you're canceled because of what you said or what you did right um and just saying like you're canceled meaning they're not going to listen to your music if you're a musician they're not going to patronize any business that you have um they're not going to support you in any way shape or form they're going to follow you all of that type of stuff means that you're you're canceled which is mainly affects you like financially you know right um and that's sort of like the the effect that cancel culture has on people largely um at least people that are still alive um because we'll Mm -hmm. you know get into that but yeah it's um and basically people uh blackballing or blacklisting um someone because of something that they said or did that um most people don't agree with or um it goes against your values in some way so obviously there are some very big name people that have been canceled fairly recently one of which Mm -hmm. r kelly um yeah r kelly i mean really should have been canceled a long time ago but um, a very long time ago there was literally literally videographic evidence but um when they were like when freaking uh gail asked him oh what did you do it he was like i beat my case i'm like so there's our so you, yeah like being acquitted <laughs> is, does not mean you didn't do it <laughs> right what oh Come my on. god y'all are so exhausting um yeah but big people that have been canceled r kelly if you didn't know now you know he um is a literal monster the devil on earth um or bill cosby who right. um admitted to drugging drugging women and having sex with them or aka raping them um also a lot of people have canceled bill cosby a lot of people have not canceled bill cosby some people also have not canceled right. r kelly um, right which <clears throat> it's confusing to me i i mean personally and we're gonna get here but i i feel like r kelly and bill cosby are probably the most successful examples of canceling like the overwhelming majority of people have canceled. Like they're not listening to R. Kelly's music. They're not streaming his stuff. Like, sis, if you can't, you gotta, you gotta delete out the playlist too because he's still getting them streams. If he's getting the streams, it's going on his books. So he's even good in jail. Okay. Um, <laughs> people have stopped watching the Cosby Show. People have like people. I don't know what else Bill Cosby has right now. Also, we saw the downfall of bill cosby publicly because he has a bunch of honorary doctorates he put a lot of money into hbcus and uh hbcus are like i forgot it's so long ago but they were like you can have your money back like we we're super good on this like revoking honorary doctorates stuff like that so we've seen yeah, like prison i can't right, like, i still can't believe they put him in prison i did not think he was gonna go to prison i i didn't think he was either because, I, I mean you know money do a lot for you money does a lot and he's old like he's very old like like old old yeah he gonna die in pr- wow i mean he might not how many years did he get nine he is pretty old if he lives to so the end of that sentence i mean he also could get out early yeah he could get out uh-huh. early um but didn't they say he wanted to do something didn't he want to be on house arrest and the girls were like no you're going to jail right i feel like that's yeah, an example house arrest in your mansion that ain't even nothing right that's how you, you house old, arrest you wasn't even finna leave anyway right so now you order in postmates and junk with an ankle monitor on it like girl that's right. not a, a you buy you a freaking 50 acre something <laughs> like, right now you got bounce houses and stuff and junk like that i mean did they even send him to a nice jail i don't even think they No, he went to state prison too yeah they didn't even send i think they were making an example out of him they would definitely make yeah. an example out of him. I was like, dang, they sent him to state prison too? That's not, like, not even, like, if he went to a private prison, I'm like, oh, he's living large. Like, yeah. if you go to a private prison, money, you know, I mean, obviously money's going to help him in state prison too, but nowhere near as much as if he had gone to a private prison. Like, you go to a private prison, he got his own room. He got probably outside food coming in. He got a TV right. in there probably. Like, all kind of stuff. State prison's going to be the worst. Three weeks ago, they said they he started appealing. I'm not gonna read this because I really don't care. But um, <laughs> <laughs> ten year sentence. Oh, Ooh, yeah. oh no 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 no. Huh. Y'all really don't care about women in this country. Like it's actually pathetic. Um, Mr. Cosby is serving a three to ten year sentence. Three. Wow. 
and he probably gonna get out on three. He's miss, he's Bill Cosby. You right. know what I'm saying? Uh, there's no there's no way he's not getting out in three years, and that might be enough to keep him alive, just so he don't die in there. Imagine imagine being Bill Cosby and dying in prison. That he's not dying in prison. I don't I don't think so. But um, I think those are only two people that have been successfully canceled. Um, mm-hmm. do and you, even some do my you, mom was just at a cookout yesterday and they was playing R. Kelly. So I'm gonna say we have a mutual friend that that was like, I don't care. I still like R. R- Kelly's music and. <sighs> I First just, of all, this person, I'm not even going to put her out there, but this person is like, she don't care what, she, what what we think anyway. But um, you can like his music. Like, there's no denying that his music is good. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, I'm never going to say, oh, step in the name of life is trash. Like, it's still the same song it was before we knew. Like, <laughs> Right. But, like. I won't. I just won't be streaming it. You can't stream it. You can't support it. him. Even, like, morally supporting him. Like, being like, yeah, you know, he sucks, but, you know. I like that song. Like, that's weird. Like, yeah. I don't like. I don't know. And for me now, like, completely honestly, I I couldn't even listen to an R. Kelly song if I wanted to. His yeah. voice makes my skin crawl. And like, as it should. Like, <laughs> like, I am okay. So before we get to that, is cancel culture important? Cause I think cancel culture is relatively new. I feel like we were canceling people. Well, also, I think cancel culture came with, like, social media because it's easy to rally people up and be like, yeah, let's cancel it. What are we going to do? We're going to cancel yeah, because it's true. I feel like the one of the main things that we've seen in our lifetime has been, like, the Chris Brown thing. And if social media was hidden like it was, na- like it is now, like it was back then, Chris Brown would have been canceled, right? But, so something, like, egregious like what Chris Brown did, like, do you think cancel culture is important? Um, I feel like it's, I don't know. I feel like it's up to the individual. Like my relationship with canceling people is very much just based on me. Um, Mm -hmm. and not really anyone else. Like I think a cancel culture, hmm, it's, it's important to me when it comes to like seeing who other people are because like i'm gonna cancel whoever i want to cancel whatever like i'm gonna do what i want to do but if you if there's somebody who just did something terrible and you cape for them like that tells me something about you yeah in my opinion like so i think it does it does bring out a lot of some people's true colors mm-hmm. and that's an and and i mean honestly that's important to me but um in terms of like is it is it important to have cancel culture like us as a group rallying together to cancel somebody and and i don't i don't really know i like i feel like i don't really care what people as a group do in terms Mm -hmm. of that like i i feel like for someone like r kelly i care a little bit more because like i i would prefer that he has no coins so like it it does have an impact right so like when it has a huge impact like that then like yeah i guess it's important when it works but we can talk more about when it works and when it doesn't to me i think cancel culture is uh, i think cancel culture is important because like there's power in numbers you know what i'm saying if we all if we all like okay we all at eastman and we're like um this professor did this and this he's canceled we gotta get him fired and enough people say that like at least it's gonna be up for review at least it's gonna be like okay what did they do you know what i'm saying like there's power in numbers and being like this person did something egregious uh let's get let's get let's do something about it but do i so i think it's important in that regard but because like leading to our next point about whether it works or not i don't think <laughs> it does so it can't it can't be that important because it just never works like it doesn't it doesn't work like y'all y'all rally behind somebody just to get people mad and we're looking at stuff like um like an example right like so Prada put out a sweater um and it was like is it Prada I keep saying Prada it was Gucci the Gucci turtleneck it's a black sweater that has like that goes over your face which okay what context and then (laughs) <laughs> um 
it has like red lips around it so like they're everyone's crying blackface so like that it's so it's culturally insensitive and everyone's like gucci is canceled and everyone's rallying around i think that's important to like shed light to the fact that y'all are doing something problematic you know i think cancel culture rallies people together i mean we can also talk about black rage and how y'all like love to capitalize off, off of that and black people keep falling for it i mean but that's another conversation for another day um but I, I think it's important to get people talking about um that kind of stuff like does is this is important this is a problem they should be canceled mm. But, I also feel like huh? I also feel like canceling like it's more the reason why I see it more individual like for me is because like I have my morals that I feel like I cannot compromise on. Mm-hmm. So like if I'm canceling somebody, it's more of like I wouldn't feel right if I continued to support this person. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. that's I can't have that on my conscience. You yeah. know. For sure, so, for sure that's why i'm like i'm not going to be up in arms if like you didn't cancel this person depending on who it is like if there's somebody like say a lot of people stop listening to kanye west i know like three kanye west songs anyway Mm -hmm. it don't make like and one of them i I probably would still listen to but like it wasn't nothing after he said that slavery was a choice like it ain't no thing for me to not listen to kanye west no more right it ain't right. no thing for me to cancel gucci because i ain't got no gucci anyway and can't afford it so <laughs> like, right i mean look the kanye thing like people are obsessed with them for whatever reason so i feel like i think that whole slavery to choice thing i forgot that happened like you see that's what canceling okay I literally forgot that happened because like y'all refuse to cancel him. Like Kanye West is like problematic, you know? And yeah, something wrong with him. Like literally. And I feel like, I think he just needs to be, a, he needs a light flash in his face. Um, yeah. But after his mom died, like he literally, I mean, I, I can, I can sympathize with that. Um, but yeah, it's like, I don't know what that feel like. So, right. Um, like all I can do is be empathetic, but yeah. he like for that comment, like <laughs> that slavery is a choice because like, everybody didn't rally up and like that doesn't make sense and, uh, first of all slave revolts literally did happen right like and then like even... there was literally everything counting against them like you you have these people that were not allowed to read they would had no access to weapons they had nothing like th- literally one side had everything and the other side had nothing like right. <laughs> you sound dumb so you sound dumb. stupid and it's like y'all didn't cancel him for that y'all had his weird church service things and I just it doesn't make it doesn't make sense to me so and people rallied around it and got mad about it and it's like it brings I guess it brought light that he sucks but then what you know yeah so we get into this idea of like does cancel culture work and I kind of already <laughs> let the cat out of the bag about what I think about that but what do you think uh, well thinking about it more like it it will only work on a group level like it, it doesn't really work on a group level because there's always there's just so many people that have their opinions and i feel like there's always right. going to be a significant number a significant enough number even if it's not the majority a um, significant enough number that's not going to cancel and right like, and but then i'm thinking of like canceling works in some regard if you have a lot of power like if, for example colin kaepernick Mm-hmm. the nfl canceled him and he and no team is taking him yeah like and like obviously he has the support of the black community and people that support his cause so like it's not like he on the street begging for coins like right. he's okay but like he like is not playing football no more because the nfl right. was like nah you canceled to us right. and and i mean no matter how many people want to see him on the field again ain't nobody hiring him right so like i guess if you got the power to do that like that's similar to like someone getting blackballed like Mm -hmm. you know or i just feel like yeah i feel like it's not it it works to a certain extent like how r kelly is broke now Mm -hmm. but a lot of people it only it only happens for like a couple weeks and then they just right back to right and you bring up a good point about like who's doing the canceling because I think it's harder to the people with money canceling the people without money 
works way better than the people without money canceling the people with money because right. if we all rally together and be like um because even like look at bill cosby like people like everyone like not everyone i love the cosby show like i really do i own the whole the whole series whatever like i grew up on it and i still can't bring myself to watch it you know what i'm saying it's like even when people agree like bill cosby's trash like and they cancel him but like, he kind of canceled himself because like now he's in jail it's like it's like undeniable but yet people are still gonna watch the cosby show like whatever but like to get all people like what you said to get all people together to be like this person is trash like it's just not gonna happen like people are always coming from somewhere else and like you have people who are freaking ignorant and being like well why are you going to that hotel room with bill cosby anyway like let's not forget about y'all um <laughs> Yeah, why uh, don't you just leave and then like right, and and why would you? Oh my God, why would you send your daughter to go with be with R. Kelly in in the first place? And 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 uh, you y'all wasn't parents and da, da, da. I'm like, oh my God, y'all are really really tiring. So it's like you're all you're always gonna have these people who like who are like to the left of common sense. Um, so I guess, but that's why to me, I don't think canceling works. I feel like you and jackie Anna said this in her video it's like you get mad for two weeks they capitalize on your rage and then like you're right back in the gucci store and i remember <laughs> black people suck so um it was like it was after the gucci outrage it was like three weeks later and the because the shade room is like it's like twitter it's like there's nothing off guard like there's there's nothing no one's safe like it, anything goes in the shade room comments right so people were like some rapper posted with a Gucci belt on. I was like, still can't believe y'all are wearing Gucci belts. And they were like, I thought Gucci was canceled in the comments. You know, like I thought Gucci was canceled. Like, and I'm like, it's not. Like Gucci does not care, except that y'all, their sales went up when y'all got mad at them. Okay, like, right. And and, and they don't care about all these uh all these people canceling them that couldn't afford no Gucci no way. Exactly. Okay, okay. Now you make <laughs> another. You make up another point. Oh, I don't want to say that is so rude. I'll talk to you after, but it's like the <laughs> it's like the ones who are can't doing the canceling. They don't care about y'all. Now if, I'm not gonna lie. Like if, if Kim Kardashian got online and be like, I'm not I'm not supporting Gucci anymore because da 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 X Y Z. Um, then y'all probably will stop shopping at Gucci, maybe. But speaking of Kim Kardashian and Patrick Star, is his name Patrick Star? Jeffrey Star, yeah. whatever. Oh, um, there's another Patrick Star, that that MUA. I thought Jeffrey Star was the MUA. There, there's two. Oh, Jeffrey Star is the one that looked like a skeleton, and Patrick Star is the one that always got the turban on. Okay, Patrick Star is a problematic one, right? No, Jeffrey Star is the one. Although Patrick Star did okay, this is <laughs> the whole thing. I just saw this on Twitter. He stole some type of format like for video from this black girl that was doing it and didn't credit her so then that was a whole thing on twitter but jeffree star is the one that did that whole comparison he compared some black woman to like a gorilla or something something like that and you know the funny thing about jeffree star is he's problematic over and over and over and over again and then kim kardashian got up and was like you should forgive him for what he said he didn't mean it and blase blase and the girls are still watching his makeup tutorials and and he's still getting um sponsorships it's like canceling doesn't work he sucks and and y'all still endorse him like i think he, i think he's coming to chicago to do something and nikki's friend called called her and was like you want to go see jeffree star and nikki was like one you don't wear makeup too why would we go and it's like y'all don't remember that he sucks you know it's like canceling doesn't work in my opinion it doesn't work um so let's talk about so we talk about people we don't like right like who cares about con uh kanye west who cares about whatever let's talk about canceling the people that you like right so yeah. how let's how is that you know what i'm saying yeah so i feel like part of the reason why canceling don't really mean much to me is because like most people that like it just hasn't really been a thing like yeah. like say r kelly there there are a couple r kelly songs that i really really do like like freaking i'm so upset i can't listen to the i'm a flirt remix i love oh, that i forgot song. he wrote that like 
the remix oh is so, like I can listen to the regular because she's not in that one, but the remix is so much better. But I won't be listening also, like, to ignition? it. Ignition, ignition. Yeah, like there are Kelly songs that I like, but oh my like God, I love the ignition. It's I don't oil. like them enough. Like I don't listen to them enough for it to be like a huge like I'm fighting my conscience every day. Like trying to like it's not that big of a deal. But and also I can't never love a song more than I love Justice for Girls. You're peeing on girls, literally. So, um, but. I just hadn't had anyone that I was like that I liked enough that it was like a struggle for me to uh cancel them but one there was one artist um that it was like that for me and I was Tyler the Creator so I started listening to Tyler the Creator in middle school which I was way too young to listen to his music but that's beside the point um I started listening to him in middle school and and that was like I've talked about like middle school was terrible for me but it was also a very formative time like so his music was something that was like really really important to me like it um it was a important uh thing in my life at the time when I was going through stuff so Mm -hmm. he's an artist that I really really uh like and I hold like close to my heart but as I got older I started realizing the stuff that was in his music there was some very very problematic stuff in his music um Mm -hmm. he was known to use a lot of homophobic slurs in his music um which I don't know like there's there was like speculation about him being gay after flower boy came out that'd be the type uh, yeah type. so i was like i don't know like is, are people okay with it now or like what and like also because it was his early stuff i feel like it's not as much in the limelight although you do see people bringing up old tweets and stuff so it's like how it's has tired. this I not that stuff. yeah it's like how has this not come like i haven't seen much conversation around the homophobic stuff that has come out of him and like it's been so so much of him using the f word over and over and over again um and but also even even if he's gay now and all is forgiven or what i don't know that was something that i really struggled with and then also he references rape a lot in his that's early weird music. you told me that? i was like wait huh yeah references like uh, like wanting to rape people okay, um so yeah re- yeah like t- like in a, in multiple songs and a lot of his songs he references um acts of rape and um and murder which is true for like a lot of hip-hop songs but just in a less graphic way than he does it because like i told you he has this one song on bastard called sarah and it's about it was him asking a girl to prom and she says hell no and he kidnaps her and kills her rapes her dead body and eats her heart and then kills himself like in the song it is crazy what like it's yeah like stuff like that like how do you listen to someone who is t- talking about how he enjoys raping women like in a song Mm-hmm. like that was something where i was like whoa, 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 whoa what have i been listening to like, right <laughs> you know? i was like no hold on what? so like i went i went years without listening to Tyler the creator yeah. because of that but like that was a sh- that was such like a hard thing like i hadn't actively canceled him i had just taken like sort of a a time a period of time i'm trying not to use the word hiatus because of you but um i had taken basically <laughs> why just a sabbatical welcome the word a sabbatical word. from his music where no. i was like thinking through where like what Three. how do i feel about this like i know that it's wrong but like Downy. am i gonna still am i gonna still keep <laughs> listening to his music and like do i listen to tyler creator now yes i do like i still do i just don't and i like i accept like that may be problematic but like Listen. i don't know <laughs> I, I like i honestly don't know i'm like th- that is that was an artist that was like it was very difficult for me to wrap mm-hmm. my mind around canceling him like, yeah <laughs> it's like cause I, it's like you feel like low-key selfish because it's like you suck but i like you <laughs> like oh <laughs> <yeah>. um, <laughs> like okay if you be, if it's, it's episode 45 y'all know i love migos I I do specifically I love Offset okay (laughs) they're fun okay like they they rap about money and girls and just being rich okay like I I love it I love the aesthetic their songs are catchy and fun okay they're just fun however um me uh Offset caught some smoke maybe a year ago a year and a half ago um, for a, a a line, okay, it's no it's no secret though, secret that a lot of these rapping, oh, I can't say that a lot of these rappers. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these rappers 
are have like homophobic lines in their in their lyrics like it's not okay but it, they just do okay and um offset had a line in his song i forgot which one uh it said pinky ring crystal clear 40k spent on private lear 60k solitaire i could not i cannot vibe with queers and he caught so much smoke for this like so much smoke and then cardi b girl you know i love you but she got her stupid stuff up there she was like offset don't really know what that mean and like he meant like queer like weird and like you like y'all can't cancel him because like he didn't really mean it like that i'm like offset's an adult two we all have a high school at the very least have a high school education okay even cardi b okay like also three we're not dumb we know what you meant when you said that like just say i'm sorry just say i suck i'm homophobic like just say that you know like but <laughs> do i still listen to offset like yeah i love him okay like <laughs> and okay to be fair like i want to defend myself just a little bit i don't think offset is growing as a person okay that's why i love him so so much <laughs> okay <laughs> like offset is growing as a person he's doing so oh, much personal so work <laughs> like him and his wife and culture culture is so beautiful which is like thank god because your parents um i mean she's kind of like screwed intellectually but hopefully they have private tutors um but i just love him okay he's doing his his work I hope you find a man and, just like offset you know, offset he's so fun he's cute okay um I'm sorry. I can't. <laughs> if Offset has to do something egregious, okay. And is homophobic? Is homophobia egregious? Yes. Okay. But what I okay. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I. Mm, it has to be really bad. It has to be. Has to be like he pees on somebody real bad. Or yeah, like, like. It has to be like. It has to be bad. Okay. Cancel Offset. And he apologized for it. I mean, it was a like half apology, like the, what all y'all girls be doing. But like, I don't know, man. It's hard. Cancel someone you like. Now, R. Kelly, it wasn't hard because like he, I, first of all, I didn't really like R. Kelly. And also he did something egregious. And yeah. also I would never, like if, if, if Offset hurt someone, it's like, I'm not, I, I can't, no matter how much I love you, I can't support you. You know, if you're hurting people, you know. I couldn't I couldn't get behind that but it's hard yeah and then there's like some people that are like half-ass canceled like I didn't listen to Chris Brown for a very long time after he oh yeah Rihanna. and like it's the point where like if a Chris Brown song comes on I won't skip it like that's where you. I'm at with Chris Brown yeah I mean I just told you about no guidance like I love that song but also I'm proud of him for not being a sex tutorial um if an R. Kelly song comes on I will skip it also is he gonna try making music in jail like I hope not <laughs> you know what? I saw oh, on Twitter. I, I saw on Twitter somebody. It, it was like a thing, and it was saying that his fans are sent, sending him fan mail, and then someone was like, "They're sending him letters to read." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Y'all suck for that." I they felt do. bad when I was just... watching his thing because, like, apparently he got teased for that, which is really, really sad. But that was before all of this happened. Like, I could, yeah, I could just imagine how sad that was like as a kid when you have you yeah. like have real trouble reading you have a learning disability and people are teasing you about the like oh my gosh and that's the only thing that made me feel bad. but i'm like that is literally no excuse like that's so irrelevant uh, like <laughs> to, literally how do you go from that to raping girls right so but also like uh, i don't know i mean if he was in jamaica he could make music from prison because you know that's like real jail down there it's like <laughs> don't mess up um but so we talked about like the people that we like canceling them and talk about this cancel culture work let's get into it there are people who are problematic in classical music we talked about them so many times namely wagner he's probably the worst one um of, out of all of them strauss guess waldo should these people be canceled and more importantly, will they ever be canceled? Like, does can does classical music lend itself to cancel culture? So, I think one thing um, I want to say that it relates to classical music, but quickly we um, forgot about Jackie Ina's video was that she, the whole um, 
comparison she did from like of canceling to yelp reviews oh which, yeah, yeah um we compared like when we were talking about before we started recording like she was saying that like yelp reviews are very much like someone gives their opinion and you're like okay i i hear you but that's not really my like that doesn't really affect what's important to me mm. that i didn't really agree with that because i feel like all the people that i've canceled is because of, like you're like you have a huge flaw in your moral character like yeah. you know yeah. and that's different from like like obviously if someone wrote a yelp review and was like this restaurant owner called me a gorilla in word and and you yeah. know obviously i'm not going there but if someone says my service was bad and it was so like that's first of all that's one right one waiter on one day on you know like yeah I, I would still go there not the same but what you brought up was like the equivalent to that in classical music would be like wc like right. we made it known that neither of us like Debussy's music. That's not a reason to cancel him. And also <laughs> going off of that, like okay, we we he was he was a uh, try for music history, right? Mm-hmm. Was he? I feel like he was. Yeah, he was. Oh yeah. my god, literally, <laughs> literally an episode. Um, so all the stuff that he was trifling for was in his personal life. Like, because he didn't like his wife, like that's his business. Like that's not to me, that's not a reason to cancel somebody because he like pushed his side. Okay. Is it terrible that he like pushed his wife to want to commit suicide? Yes. However, that's his personal life. That has that to me, that's no reason to cancel WC, you know, because mm-hmm. like we don't like him. Like we can go to a concert and give a review and be like, Oh, uh, it was good. So WC came on. And right. someone else is going to be like, well, I'm not going to cancel XYZ Orchestra because I like WC. You know, it's like. Yeah, like I'm not going to be like, you're a trash person because you listen to WC. Or, you right. know, like that's a kind of an example of like there's been some talk about people frivolously canceling people over things that are like not even that deep. Like mm-hmm. that's like something where it's like it's just a matter of opinion and not really a matter of like your moral character. Like, well, it like it kind of is because he was trash because of how he treated his wife. But like that don't mean that his music like should never be played. His music should never be played because it sucks. But that's my opinion. <laughs> right. That's a thing. It's like also like because like there's some people who would argue that WC's competitions are like groundbreaking and like the first of its kind. I mean, yeah, no uppies and downs. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, let me quit. I quit, I quit, I quit. Um but that's not a reason like to cancel him. Like his personal life is his personal business. And, like his writing style is his business. Like canceling him because like we think he's trash is like all the girls being like, Well, Mr. Taylor is canceled because he told me that my third finger was too high in the thing and he canceled. Like, uh, girl, <laughs> it's not that right. <laughs> but like, I feel like like what you said about his comp- his compositions being groundbreaking, like that is probably one of the main reasons why classical music will never cancel certain composers that yeah. actually might deserve to be canceled. Like when we talk about Wagner and we talk about Strauss, like they did these totally egregious things um, that were like, they were just blatantly uh, xenophobic towards a, a, a whole group of people um, just because of like, just literally denying their humanity. Um, Especially okay. Wagner. I, it's yeah. Okay but but classical music is not is it, i mean they, they, they've been talking about we've known about wagner since it was literally happening like right right he we've known about this things for so long and he's still not canceled and he probably never will be because of how much he has contributed to the art of of opera and, and classical music like that's one of the main reasons i feel like classical music is like not really like it doesn't lend itself to cancel culture yeah and the thing about Wagner is like okay if we were talking about somebody somebody like Stamets right like we found out Stamets like owned like 20,000 slaves okay that's impossible he owned 200 slaves and like whatever he was a slave master on the low in Germany and we canceled Stamets like what is that really gonna do what are we gonna really lose you know what I'm saying like people are still (laughs) like Wow. people are gonna play <laughs> i mean it's it's true like people like he wrote like a couple little um i forgot what those are called i'm literally blanking it's like um he wrote some little string orchestra things and like whatever he wrote a viola concerto which is not not as important over here it's it's important but it's not like as it's not held to the same thing here as it is in um europe but like it's like okay we have hofmeister like viola's play that it's like Stamets wrote 
good music and contributed to classical music, but he didn't like change the trajectory of classical music. Like Wagner and in his hatred and his like, um, and like being self-absorbed, like he changed classical music because it's like, he he was into this whole like we got to combine everything like the, the symphony is obsolete so let's have the girls working really hard in the pit and playing all this stuff and then let's have the girls singing on stage and that's all we need and like that's groundbreaking like that is like he was the first of his of his of his kind to do that and it's like if we ignore also he did some other stuff that i kind of blanked out on um like having <laughs> like the ring cycle which I, y'all are obsessed with it i don't get it but um the rings like y'all love that like reoccurring themes like he, he he did that kind of stuff and it's like if we cancel Wagner like there's a huge part of the repertoire that's missing like huge part and I think like y'all I mean I can't say I personally care because although I love opera I won't be boohooing if we don't if I never play a Wagner opera but like the the repertoire is missing something if we cancel Wagner it's like it's impossible to do and then what else are we gonna play you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. I mean, Puccini is way better, in my opinion. But also, I can't, I can't, I'll be remiss to say, like, Wagner stuff isn't good. I mean, I don't enjoy playing it because I feel like it's arm day. But, um, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's, it's difficult. It's like, is it really realistic to cancel Wagner? I can't, I can't say. I don't, I don't think so. And I also yeah. agree with you. It's not going to happen. And, but I, I was thinking, and I do see, like, there are certain things like that that are happening in classical music that are sort of like okay some people might get canceled like people that are alive now like we were just talking about placido domingo last week who they canceled his they a couple of orchestras canceled his appearances i mean his appearances but also it's a little different but also we just had joshua bell up at eastman last year i mean joshua bell is that yeah joshua bell is a little like I mean, it's it's not different because like in both cases, as of right now, it looks like there's only allegations, and it's like that's a whole other debate about like yeah. what do you do when there's like no concrete evidence, but like you also like you know things or you've seen things or someone you know has been involved with things, and like I'm not gonna get into who told me what when um when Joshua Bell came to Eastman, but yeah. um you know just there were some people that had really really strong opinions on that but Mm -hmm. they still like they addressed it in rehearsal and were like well he's coming so and because that that concert was sold out like right like that was a big that was like the big concert of the year was joshua bell is coming to kodak hall they were not gonna cancel that regardless Regardless. so (laughs) um, i mean we saw the cancellation who was william who, who was the former concert master of cleveland he was canceled. yeah that dude yeah him i mean and, when I've been to the, um james levine or levine that which guy was shocking to me that was shocking yeah was so he like at? was he the med the med yeah that was like a little glimmer of hope because it's like you have james levine is like a a renowned conductor he's not like whatever he's a renowned conductor and they really fired him which is like which is crazy but then also i bet you um he's still probably giving people conducting lessons mm-hmm. and i bet that's and that's a thing with classical music is i feel like sometimes y'all don't really care how problematic somebody is like i bet you what was his name his name william prussell right yeah Cleveland? yeah, yeah. That's him. i bet you like i bet you people are still taking their kids to go study with him violin and their parents just in the room with them you know what i'm saying like i feel like that's still happening because what like you're one of the best violinists in the world <laughs> and that reminds me of somebody um in the la phil um oh see i remember a yeah example. a long time ago in uh, in the 90s um this uh, a, a member of the la phil who also taught at usc um was convicted of possession and distribution of child pornography tell me why he was my stand partner twice when i was in see? high school at a side-by-side I'm like of all the first of all of all the people y'all could have y'all could have sent here, dude, come on. And, right. Um but like he he was fired from U from USC after that, but he still kept his job in that life field. And I and you know that I don't know how his tenure was back then. I think he's been in there for quite a long time, so he's probably tenured by then. Um mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean that's a another example of like I don't know what sort of like 
I feel like like people that like things that are just coming to light now have a better chance of like a cancellation than yeah. things like Wagner. Wagner been around for too long. They ain't canceling him. You do you think we'll ever see the cancellation of Wagner? I don't think so. Not completely. But then again, who? But nobody's ever completely canceled. There's always going to be people, yeah, that are on the other side of it. So, but I still don't. Uh, it's hard to gauge because I don't know how many people will like how the statistics on how much he's programmed now. So like, I feel like I would never personally monitor that. Let me but, pull that. Up. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. And it's like you know, it's ironic about the Met. Are y'all gonna put Wagner and Porgy and Bess in the same season? <laughs> Yeah, it seems like people are still uh, programming him as planned, though, for the time being. I mean, especially, like, it's not pressing. It's not like he's alive right now. Um, and benefiting from it. Right. I mean, his estate is. Yeah. I mean, are they? I don't know. How does that How does that work? I'm sure his estate uh-huh. is benefiting from something. Well, no, it's in public domain, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. So yeah, I, don't, so. I don't know how that works. Someone's going to have to tell, tell me how that works. Okay, so spoke too soon. So, <laughs> the Met is doing. How do you even say this? Der, what a one of one of Wagner's things. Der. F- <laughs> what? <laughs> Y'all oh, heard it. They're doing der fluff and fluff. Yep. But Gary, if it's conducting, I love. Yeah. Oh, I do love him. Oh my freaking goodness! Yeah, that would be a heartbreak if he was problematic. I don't know what I would do. I'll probably like bleed from the inside out. I'm already doing mm-hmm. that, but you know what I mean. Um. Oh my god, I have to play under him one day. That would be a dream. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think Wagner will ever get canceled because you see right there, and and it's on the same season. <laughs> if I listen, if I worked at the Met, I'd been like. If I worked like up in the mid, I'd have been like, "Are y'all really about to program Wagner and Borg and Best in the same?" I'm like, "That's that don't nothing <laughs> seem wrong with that." Which like that don't nothing wrong with that. There's nothing ringing a bell. There's nothing being like, "Hmm, nothing." And and that's like feel like I feel like that's people thinking like, "Well, it's just the music, and we can't connect anything oh to the thing." And it's like you can't. I just feel like you you can't completely separate anything from politics and race. Like this is literally America. Also the 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 mere of you progr- like the mere fact that you're programming his stuff to me is our it's just, it's just a problem. It doesn't matter like we have to we have to celebrate the music like okay, so celebrate the music and and whatever. So when you have Wagner's bio in the playbill, you're going to put the Nazi stuff too? You going to mm-hmm. I mean, make sure y'all don't leave that out so we can all be looking stupid you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. I feel like as, as someone who loves opera like I, I, I understand like it's and who wants to be in opera like I understand that I'm gonna play Wagner operas you know what I'm saying like I can't there's no getting around that but to me it's just really weird like that there's no way out of this it's like y'all are just gonna continue to program Wagner and there's like nothing we can do about it because he's contributed so much to the repertoire and like what else is there? I mean, like, how many Mozart operas are you gonna play? You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. I just feel like if there were some black people up at the top, <laughs> that wouldn't happen. I think like, that's a huge oversight. In my in my opinion, at least have the respect to not program someone the same season that hates black people or anyone who's not white. Right. I mean, I just feel like that's. I'm not gonna come for the Met though because I let y'all for real. Um. <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> okay let's wrap this up because we've been talking about this forever but okay so it's like it's kind of related but one thing that jackie talked about one thing she said is that everybody's problematic in some way shape or form you're problematic what do you think about that like oh like delaney you're problematic like what if someone said it to you like i think you're problematic like yeah Um, i feel like it, I feel like maybe she I don't think that's true I feel like maybe everybody has like some sort of problematic opinion on something yeah. like nobody mm-hmm. has the right opinion on everything because there's no such thing as that 
right like the, you know i feel like it may be something similar to like everybody's cute to somebody you know there might be yeah. somebody that literally repulses you but somebody else thinks that they're the finest person on earth like mm-hmm. there might be a, an opinion of mine that you think is absolutely outlandish mm-hmm. but a bunch of other people agree with like you know i feel like there are some things I, f- I feel like in order for something to be like definitively problematic to me um and i feel like this should really extend to anyone it's like you have an opinion that like denies someone's humanity like who they are something yeah. about them that mm-hmm. is them you know like the color of their skin uh their gender identity their social um not social their sexual orientation like or their socioeconomic mm-hmm. status like something yeah. you hate them and you uh don't believe that they deserve uh basic humanity because of something about them that is not their fault you know yeah. and it's not a character trait like oh mm. like i said um i really dislike wendy williams and i don't feel bad for her because of what's happening with her with her ex-husband or whatever like i'm not saying that she deserves it i'm mm-hmm. saying i don't feel bad for her mm-hmm. um and that's because of how i feel about the way she talks about other people yeah. um and the way that she treats other people that is a character trait of hers that i do not like Mm-hmm. so i think she's problematic that's not like oh she she black so she probably you know yeah like that that's just how i feel about it i mean i would agree with that to say like cause i think like jackie Arna, i love her so she says stuff like she just says i th- I noticed that she says stuff like kind of globally because also like she's doing her makeup at the same time so whatever like i think she just says like her opinions globally but to say that someone is problematic, I think everybody has like an ignorant, uh, ignorant viewpoint on something. Yeah, because like, there's, there's you, everyone's ignorant on on some yeah, things. You can't something, know everything. You, you right, you can't know everything. So someone someone has an ignorant thing they've done or said. Like, but does that make you problematic? I mean, to have an opinion, I feel like to have an opinion. Just okay. If I were to say like, I hate dogs, right? Like, does that make me problematic? Yes. I, no, that doesn't. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> does that make me problematic? No. If I'm, if I'm like, I hate dogs. I'm out there killing them in the street and like <laughs> running over with cars. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, am I like every dog I see? I I, I walk around with a, a shotgun so I could kill every freaking dog I see. Am I now? Am I now problematic? Yes. I feel like those are two you different know, things. So- murderers and also a murderer <laughs> but sick in the because, head <laughs> like i feel like that that makes that makes me problematic you know like i don't i have an opinion on something and i'm carrying it out it's like if i'm i'm racist and i'm working for gucci and i'm like you know it'd be real dope guys if we made these blackface masks that we could zip up over so we could all look like you know what i'm saying like that's to me is problematic but to say like someone's problematic for a viewpoint but then mm, it's tricky because wagner had viewpoints but he also mm-hmm. like published them and like also i had think, a drawing that excluded mendelssohn and all the other jews so yeah i think it depends on what the viewpoint is and like um what it affects like you have right. say i have a person like you have a personal opinion you don't like dogs like first of all that's not denying anyone like they're like you don't think dogs don't deserve to live and like the, you know right. that's different right but right. um right. you don't like dogs so you don't have a dog and you don't associate in like when your friend you go to your friend's house who has a dog they put their dog outside for the duration that you're there and then you leave and they let the dog back in like that's not problematic right but say you have an opinion that affects is affecting like um the way things operate around you in a way that's like you work at this is this is on orange is the new black um a reason why somebody was in prison like you work as a barista and you start poisoning every every person that's not white like okay you hold that you know like you hold that belief inside you that is affecting other people and is like you have some sort of you're a cog in a system that is like Mm -hmm you know affecting other people like a racist having a racist view is not it, it's going to manifest itself in some way shape or form that is not something that you could be like oh well, i only hold that in my mind and it doesn't affect anything i do that is something like a racist or a homophobic or a transphobic or a xenophobic belief 
those are things that like it, it doesn't matter whether or not you think them behind closed doors they will affect the way that you treat people yeah like they just do right and, and, and you know that's why i feel like that's something that should be true for everyone like that's something that um that everyone should think is problematic right and like it's the same thing with like like the quote-unquote president of the united states like the views that he holds are literally affecting the country they're yeah. affecting millions of people like and like even if he didn't like even if he wasn't like destroying the country the way that he he is his his viewpoints like you said are just problematic on their own even if he even if they weren't yes. being manifested in the way that they have been they're they're just problematic because yeah. it's like you literally hate people for things that they cannot change right and like did he go up to a church and shoot 10 people no but you're on the tv screen perpetuating these ideas that somebody saw that emboldened them to go to to go over the edge and act on an idea that they had so yes right. you are you're problematic like you as a person are problematic like right. there's a difference like, between I, having problematic viewpoints and being a problematic person they're both bad but there it is <laughs> there it is yeah and it's like it's not like you're problematic because like like you prefer drums over flats you know what i'm saying like that to me like i feel like team drums what said team drums really yeah i know (laughs) i think a lot of people majority of people like flats i like drums i used to love flats i used to ask for all flats but loki's extra um wow oh, anyway that's the point we were we were we were just being really eloquent now i'm we canceled the, cancel delaney hashtag cancel delaney <laughs> <laughs> or something i don't even freaking eat anymore girl <laughs> um but yeah we're gonna put some of this on on instagram i said that last week and didn't do it but um <laughs> what did we talk about last week oh girl i i literally oh, edited Tony the episode Morrison. oh okay <laughs> no but i feel like i was gonna it was two weeks ago i was gonna put something on ig but I, I i couldn't figure out how to do it in a way that i cared about so i just left it alone but um this i'm, I'm curious i want to know um so yeah let us know your opinion like uh, some of y'all like it's mainly our friends who like text us or like y'all no not even some of y'all will dm us like do that interact yeah. it's like or email we like us. that stuff okay email us like we want to hear like problematic like i would love to see a world of wagner's canceled I, I think we'll be okay without the ring cycle you know i think we'll be just fine you know what i'm saying yeah. like making a choice to not program something because like he sucks like mm-hmm. i think that's not whatever um okay let us know what you think and we're moving on All Right, black excellence black excellence where we hype you up gas you up and give you your props because there's room for everyone at the top this week i'm talking about monica ellis listen i can't get over how sickening she is i just it just don't make no sense okay monica ellis i would say she is a bassoonist but she's the bassoonist so let's just go over there right so so monica ellis is the bassoonist um (laughs) right (laughs) Uh, she did her BA at Oberlin, master's degree at Juilliard. Um, she performed. She's performed with the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center, the Absolute Music Ensemble, Perspectives Music Ensemble, Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra, American Symphony Orchestra, and the Alvin Ailey uh, Dance Center. There's dance theater. There's more, but you know, y'all like to be <laughs> modest. Um, she's taught at the conservatories, conservatories of music at Purchase College, Brooklyn College, Manus Music Preparatory Division, and Juilliard's Music Advancement Program. Um, mm, she's most celebrated, I believe, for being one of the founding members of Amani Wins. So Amani Wins, if you don't know, <laughs> girl. Amani right, Wins. Where have you been for <laughs> like, like 26 years? Like, oh, how do you not know? Okay, anyway, everyone's ignorant. We don't know. Okay. So Amani Wins uh, is a win court. Oh, quartet. Okay, Katie. A win, <laughs> a win quintet, um, primarily uh, made up of Black and Latinx players. Um, they're celebrating twenty years this year, and they're most known for expanding the win quartet. Quintet. Okay, I'm so used to string quartets, Monica. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, they're so, they're expanding the win quintet repertoire um, because they include new and diverse voices so like they'll do african-american composers like they've collaborated with jesse montgomery uh winston morales like they've 
like they collaborate with African American clothes because like y'all girls don't like to program us so they're like cool we'll do it um and they've performed around the world uh, around the country everywhere um and their album the classical underground in 2005 was nominated for a grammy in 2006 so monica is literally that girl like literally she's so sickening she's so beautiful um i i said it before on the show like i had to try not to be ghetto like when i heard the the bassoon like when i heard it was like an it was like an experience okay like i had to try not to be ghetto because i know like it annoys y'all to turn around when when y'all be playing but like i i've never heard bassoon playing like that i mean garrett too because i like i get excited every time the opening trilogy comes but that's right I mean. <laughs> i'll be like how do you sound like this um <laughs> but, but anyway like monica like i just love her sound love her personality like she's so welcoming she was here at eastman like we said we met her and talked with her she also she, didn't they do some type of program at, at manis like a um chamber program didn't she just did, is that the yeah first? they yeah, had she the started that too. uh chamber chamber music festival and they're really into that like not only are they playing the Amani wins like a playing um black music and um latinx music not only are they doing that they also do a lot with the community like they really care about that kind of stuff so like they go and they play in schools and around the community um so they're just dope she's dope Amani wins check them out i'm linking the website you can take a look um at all the stuff that she's been doing and yeah shout out to her black excellence you got a piece of the week yeah, so mixing it up this week, not doing like a regular piece. Um, but I'm okay. I'm sure you guys have seen um those classical music mashup videos where that guy he like does a bunch of different composers. He like puts their compositions together, and it has like the little sheet and has a composer's face. And like, have you seen those? Oh, and like the head be bouncing up and down. Yeah 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 so he's done a couple of those and i was scrolling through um youtube and he just came out with another one like this week um so i think those are super super it's just like another one like he's done two oh it's a mashup right yeah like and he'll like i think it's i think it's really really cool like that's super super cool um but yeah he came up with the third one using different pieces different composers um and playing it on piano and yeah, so I thought it was really oh, I cool. Yeah. I could never do something like that. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna but, take a look. Yeah, it's super dope. What 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 that is? I don't even talk about. It. Yeah, this is his third one, and I think mm-hmm. the sheet the sheet music is coming soon. Cause I was like, yeah, I could see somebody wanting to play that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's, and that's super like, cool. That's smart. That's how you capitalize on that. Yeah, and it's like, I'm like, that sounds hard. To it just like hard. to take a bunch of d- separate composers from different eras and different yeah. compositions and make them flow together like that and mm-hmm. and not even flow together they're not even flowing together back to back some of them are overlapping oh shoot yeah, yeah like I wanna, I wanna look at that. and it's and it's cool like i like the i think the first one is still my favorite but i also think that's just because that's the one i recognize the most tunes from so it's like mm-hmm. it's really interesting to see like how they merge like some Beethoven symphony with like a with um freaking the Nutcracker and like it's you know oh, like cool. it's yeah, yeah. it's super super cool. So the first one's my favorite, but he just came out with a new one. So I'm gonna link um the new one, and I'm sure it'll take you to his page where you can see the other two if you haven't seen them before. You know the name offhand? Nope. The name okay, of the video? Well, the name of the guy? No, I don't know his name. Oh, I should probably well, should have. Had also, his name. like. It takes nothing to subscribe to people's channels. So, like, mm-hmm. subscribe. And, I mean, if you don't want to watch their stuff, then don't. Um, but, yeah, subscribe. Right. Support. Yeah. Oh, his name is Grant Woolard. Yeah. Look at, Take a look at his YouTube channel and sub- subscribe. I know, like, with YouTube, like, if you subscribe to certain things, you'll start seeing related things, which may or may not be annoying to you. But, like, support people. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and our, like, three followers. <laughs> 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 um, also, I just remembered... I just remembered. We have to mention that thing. <laughs> oh my gosh, we forgot all this time. I don't even know how to find uh, out to scroll through my notification. Okay, well I know it's um called Twenty One CM, um Pop Picks. Um, our friend Garrett, um, cre- like he picked out some of uh some things like 
that he really I don't know like it's supposed to be like uh things or people that like you're into at the moment that are like doing cool yeah. things um and so he picked a couple of really cool things like gateways the Harmonic orchestra he also mm. shouted us out which i was like ah. right um and there's like you can pick um people and like the most the people that get the most picks like go on to like some other round and you know but um yeah so you can go online i don't know if it's if the period is over i don't or not. think so like where you no, can I'm- pick us yeah, I don't think so. I think we're still good. I think we have a little bit of time. Y'all, help us out. Like, we're kind of behind. What post are we in? Okay, we're, like, in third place on here out of, like... Oh, really? Yeah, but here's the thing. No, we're in fifth place. <laughs> oh, we're further than that. Oh, no. That's <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I feel like if y'all just... Well, I'm going to put in, I'm, I'm gonna put in the, the link in the bio. In the bio, you hear me? I'm going to put the link in the description. We should also like, put it in our bio on Instagram, though yeah we should because that, that other one is old but we'll put the link in the bio and in the description please 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 pick us like please please like please please like i feel like um, if enough of you guys do it we might could do something so right. do it please we love you and, and y'all love us because we be talking about nothing for 40 for 45 weeks and y'all still here so you might as well pick us for something um so yes and we'll mention it and we'll keep mentioning it until y'all do it so it's called 21cm.org and we will um we will link it so please support us if you care about us and love us mm-hmm. i just want to <laughs> so much for me trying not to do netflix and i'm where i just got a notification that season six through nine and naruto just got on netflix so i'll see you later wow this is gonna be a long time <laughs> you know how long these seasons are like they're like 30 episodes long <laughs> like <laughs> Well, so then Lenny can go do her self-care routine. Thank you so much for listening <laughs> to Classically Black Podcast. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Classically Black Podcast. If you have a piece of the week suggestion, black excellence suggestion, we love getting those, by the way. Um, and the moment thing, intermission suggestion, email them to classicallyblackpodcast at gmail.com and we will talk to y'all next week. Bye, y'all. Bye.